Welcome to Faith Life Ministries International, the home of miracles. Total Gospel to Total Man. Praise the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Greetings to every one of us, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are grateful to God for the privilege once more to see the month of May 2020. In spite of all that has before our world, God by his mercy has kept us. We are here today not because we are smarter than those who have passed on, but because of the mercies of God, we are all beneficiary of God's kindness and God's mercy. And we lift our hands in praise to say thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and for your mercies that endure it forevermore. Let me welcome every one of us under the influence of my voice once more to our month of divine health, the month of May 2020. There can't be any better time for God to have given this prophetic word than now, particularly with what we are faced with. It's possible to live a sickness-free life by the power in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that every one of us under the influence of my voice by the prophetic word from God for the month of May 2020, our month of divine health, that from this month and for the rest of your life, as Jesus tarry, sickness and disease shall be far from your habitation, far from your home, far from your body, as the heavens are far from the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, you never know how valuable health is until you lose it. I decree and I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not lose your health. Your children will not lose their health. In the name of Jesus, the sickness and disease that cut others short and bring forth premature death shall not come near your dwelling place in the mighty name of Jesus. Not because you are better, but because you are in covenant with the almighty God. One sickness, one attack from a sickness can wipe away one's entire savings. We therefore do not pray that from this month and through the rest of our life, we will never be sick again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at the Bible. In the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 26. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 26. One sickness can wipe away one's entire savings. And if God does not intervene by his mercy and by his healing, can even wipe away one's life. Mark 5 verse 25. And a certain woman which have an issue of blood for 12 years, verse 26, had suffered many things of many physicians. I do not know how many under my voice have been victims of terrible diseases and sicknesses that has cost you all your life savings and yet you are not getting any better just like this woman you are the reason why i am speaking this morning by the authority in the name of jesus the name that is greater and stronger than any kind of sickness i cause that sickness in your body to die to his roots in the mighty name of jesus this woman has suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all, just one sickness for 12 years, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. There are many like that, who are victims of terminal sicknesses. The more you spend, the worse your situation gets. Well, hear me, good news for you. Jesus the healer is here as I speak the word of God. I cause that sickness to live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and for your kindness. But it ought not to be so. For everyone who is born again, 
saved by the blood of Jesus, it ought not to be so. I'm not talking about divine healing. I'm talking about divine health. Life that is free from sickness and diseases. Someone might be saying, what are you saying, pastor? Is it possible to live and never fall sick? Yes, it is possible. Because in the beginning, it was not so. The Bible says God created man after his image and his likeness. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. It's important we take note of the word of God. The Bible says in Genesis 1.27, it says, So God created man in his own image. I ask you, can God be sick? If God can be sick, and because you are created in the image of God, sickness and disease, therefore, is not your portion. So there was no provision for healing at creation. God never intended for man to fall sick. So he never provided anything for man sickness there was no provision for sort man was designed created by god after his image and his likeness god cannot be sick the image of god cannot fall sick so the life god expect man to live is a life free from sickness and disease in the image of god created he him male and female created he them brethren sickness only came as a result of the fall of man from grace. And Jesus had to come to create a repair program for man's deficiency after man fell from grace. That is why the Bible says, by his stripes you were healed. There was no provision for healing in the beginning. Man was designed to go from year to year till his years on earth is expired free from sickness and disease. Imagine the church in the wilderness, the church of the old. The Bible says for 40 days, God carried them out of Egypt. For 40 days through the wilderness, they journeyed. He said not one of them was feeble. Not one of them fell sick. They went from strength to strength. And that is the church in the Old Testament. How much more the church in the New Testament born, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you are under the influence of my voice, I need you to get ready that from this day and for the rest of your life, sickness and disease shall be far away from your body and from your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 105 and verse 37. Psalm 105 and verse 37. Glory be to Jesus. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble. There was not one feeble. There was not one feeble. All of them were healthy and they were strong. The good new version of the Bible said. He said all of them were healthy and they were strong. For 40 years. 40 years is almost half of a man's life on earth. So imagine yourself for 40 years, no hospital. 40 years, no sickness. 40 years, no medication. 40 years, no visitation to any kind of doctor. That was what God did for them in the wilderness. That was the church of the old. How much more the church of the new, born of the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is God's plan for his children. This is God's wish for everyone that is a child of God. Brethren, divine health is not just available, it's a possibility. Divine health is not just available, it is a possibility. And I'm trusting God that as you receive the word of life in this month of divine health, God will supernaturally grant you supernatural immunity against sickness and disease in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at Todd John and verse 2. This is God's mind for the church. Todd John and verse 2. I'd like you to open your spirit and receive the word of God and believe God even as you confess your health and see the hand of God do great things in your life. Third John chapter 1 and verse 2. Third John chapter 1 and verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. This is the mind of God for every child of God. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper it and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. This is my definition of divine health. You are prosperous materially, 
you are prosperous in your body, your health, you are prosperous in your soul, your mind. Then you know you are sound. This is God's will and desire for the church. So if you ask him, is it the will of God for me to live a life free from sickness and disease? Yes, this is the answer. This is God's will that you may prosper, that you may be in health even as your soul prosper. Brethren, I hope you know that in the order of God's ordained plan, health comes before wealth. Because no health, no wealth. If you don't have health, you can enjoy wealth. It's important you know that. A man who has money and does not have health, how does he enjoy the money that he has? Then all the money that he has made, he will spend the money in trying to take care of his health. And if God does not show mercy to that man, that sickness might take that man's life. The devil is a liar. This is your father's wish. This is your father's mind for you. I pray in Jesus' name, every form of weakness in your body, I curse it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Receive strength in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says they shall go from strength to strength all day that appear in Zion. That is your portion from today. I have nothing against medical science. I believe in medical science. I believe in peace. I believe in believers taking medication is good because God only meets you at the level of your faith. But I'm challenging you this morning that you can grow your faith from the point of believing God for healing to the point of living in sound and divine health. A place where you are free completely from sickness and disease. Where every morning you wake up, you are getting stronger and stronger. As your days, your strength shall be. As you grow older, you grow stronger. It's possible because that is God's original intent. That is God's mind for you when he created you. Sickness is the work of Satan, not of God. Sickness is the work of Satan. There is no earthly parent who will use sickness to teach his or her child a lesson. God has no hand in the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity is from the kingdom of darkness. I therefore address every altar of darkness that is casting spells or shooting arrows of sickness and disease around families. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Seize by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Exodus 15 and verse 26. Child of God, your case is different. You will not be sick anymore. If you believe me, say amen to it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Exodus 15, 26. And say, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his status, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. In other words, what shall befall the Egyptians is not permitted to come to you. The Egyptians is the type of the world. They who do not know God. Everyone who knows God and is a child of God, you are not permitted to suffer what the world suffer. If you're a child of God under the sound of my voice, listen to this telecast and you are a victim of any kind of sickness going on right now, I cause your body now to receive healing. Put your hands where that sickness is. I cause your body now to receive healing. I cause the symptoms that you are seeing in your body, I cause it to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ back to the region of darkness where you come from. In Jesus' mighty name. What is divine health? It's important I define this very clearly. What is divine health? I give you three definitions. Number one, divine health is living the abundant life of God free from sickness and disease. Divine health is living the abundant life of God free from sickness and diseases. John chapter 10 and verse 10. This is the life of God that is called Zoe. Every born again child of God, everyone saved, washed by the blood of Jesus, has the life of God in him or her. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, Jesus speaking, that they may have life. How can you have the life of God and be falling sick? He lived on this earth for 33 years. 
there was no record anywhere in the scripture where the disciples went to visit Jesus on a sick bed. No record in the scripture where the Bible says Jesus was sick. No record. Not even about his disciples. Child of God, you can live a sickness-free life. And remember, God only meets you at the level of your faith. Like I said, if you want to remain at the level of receiving healing, praise God. If that is the level of your faith, praise God. If you want to remain at the level of taking medication, there is nothing wrong with it, praise God. Because God is the one that gives all men wisdom. That is the level of your faith. God will meet you there. But if you grow by faith and you are saying, after this word, I believe you, Lord, in divine health, you can come to a point where you live a life free from sickness and disease. I am come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. Abundant life is a life free from sickness. Abundant life is a life that has everything in abundance, materially, financially, and otherwise. That is your portion from today. Number two, divine health is the state of being free from sickness and disease and injury. Divine health is the state of being free from sickness, disease, and injury. It means you can come to a point where even injuries will not come to you. All this little domestic accident, accident at home, accident on the way to work, you can come to a point where you can live free from it. You have to believe it to enjoy it. Somebody is saying, oh, why, why, why is he saying what he's saying? But John chapter 1 and verse 12, the Bible says, As many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He said, as many as receive him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe in his name. So whatever you believe, you become. God never gives you the ability to become what you do not believe in. If what I am preaching now or teaching, you do not have faith in it, there is no way you can partake or enjoy of it. I hope you know that all of God's promises and inheritance, you can only assess it by faith. No wonder the Bible says, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her. All things are possible with God, and all things are possible to him that believeth. If you believe that by faith you can live a life, free from sickness and disease, brethren, then it is possible. And I decree in the name of Jesus, receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Divine health number two, like I said, is the state of being free. The state of being free from sickness, diseases, and injury. It means that you can journey through this world free from sickness, disease, and injury. Like we saw in the book of Psalm 105, we just read. The Bible says for 40 years, God led them through the wilderness and not one, not one of them was feeble. Every one of them were healthy, going from strength to strength, from strength to strength for 40 years. When was the last time you enjoyed sound health for a whole year, for two years, for three years, they did for 40 years? And yet, that was the church in the Old Testament. How much more you Christ in you. You have Jesus in the inside of you, the hope of glory. Sickness and disease is not your portion. Brethren, divine health is a possibility. And you can receive it if you believe. As many as receive him, to them he gave power to become. You can become and enjoy that life of God, free from sickness, disease, and injury. Number three, divine health is a physical and mental and social state of well-being. Divine health is a physical and mental and social state of well-being by the help of God. It means that you can come to a point where physically, where mentally, where socially you are well by the help of God. Not by power, not by mind, but by the Spirit of God. Not by your education, not by your qualification on it, not by the environment where you live, not by the society where you are, but by the help of God. By the help of God. Not even by what you eat or don't eat, but by the help of God. As much as you need to take care of yourself, eat right, exercise, do all of these things. But what I am talking about is not ordinary. That is why it is called divine health. 
I'm not just talking about health. I'm talking about divine health. It has something to do with God Almighty. And if you believe God, that is his life. And if you're a child of God, you will enjoy it. You will be a partaker of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I know many have called and said to me, Pastor, how possible it is to live a life free from sickness and disease? 100% possible. All the scriptures I've showed you are proof that the word of God does not fail. If you believe in the word of God, healing is good. Healing is wonderful. But healing is for children. It's for young converts. Every mature believer should aspire for divine health and not healing. What is healing? Please take note of this. Healing is a process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. Healing is a process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. It means that you fall sick, you get healed, you fall sick, you get healed, you recover back to well-being and then you get well again. That is healing. It's good. It's also a gift from God. Like I said, it was an afterthought. It only came after Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary. And that is why the Bible says, by his stripes you were healed. But originally, in the beginning of God's mind for mankind at creation, man was not designed to be sick. Tell me, show me one passage of the Bible where the Bible says Adam was sick. 900 plus years. No record that he was sick. 900 plus years. You hardly go a week without falling sick. You hardly go a month without falling sick. You hardly go three months without falling sick. The devil is a liar. I cause that weakness in your body in the name of Jesus. It's a lie of the devil to say to you, this is my sickness. You don't owe any sickness. At the root of every sickness is the wickedness of the hand of Satan. And Jesus came to liberate us from that wickedness of Satan. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifested, that he might destroy the works of Satan. Sickness is one of the works of Satan. I therefore, in the name of Jesus, come against every sickness that is attacking you mentally, spiritually, physically, in the name of Jesus Christ, out of your body in Jesus' mighty name. Brethren, believe God and you shall enjoy the peace and the life that God has promised us, which is sound health. Who is at the root of every sickness? It's important we know this. Who is at the root of every sickness? Because if you don't know it, then you will keep embracing sickness as if it's a gift. And it's not. We curse it in the name of Jesus, including what has before our world today. And that is why as an intercessor, I have made it a point of duty to pray for as many who are looking up to God Jehovah for healing. And I thank God testimonies are coming in. And I tell you friends, if you believe in the power of God that cannot fail, you will not die prematurely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is the root of sickness and disease? Act chapter 10 and verse 38. The book of Act chapter 10 and verse 38. At 1038, he says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So everyone Jesus healed from sickness were oppressed of the devil. So everyone sick that was healed by Jesus were sick as a result of satanic oppression. So sickness is an oppression of Satan. It doesn't matter how the sickness came, whether the sickness came by carelessness or by poison or by you not eating healthy or by ignorant because there are many of God's children that are destroyed by ignorant for my children are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It doesn't matter whichever way the sickness came. The bottom line is the root of every sickness is Satan. Satan is the originator of sickness, not God. God is a good God. A good God can give bad gifts. The Bible says, if you who are heavenly know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father. We serve a good God. So at the root of every kind of sickness is the wickedness of Satan. And that is why, child of God, you must aspire, not just for healing, but for sound divine health. Because it is available and it is possible. Obviously, you have a part to play. You have your part to play to enjoy divine health. 
it's not enough just being born again or being saved, which I'm going to show us in a short while. And when you play your part, brethren, there is no way the wicked can come near your dwelling place. I put an edge of God's fire around you and your family. In the mighty name of Jesus from today, the arrows of sickness fire that you and your family will cause them to return back to sender in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Job chapter 2 and verse 7. The book of Job 2 and verse 7. The devil is the root of every form of sickness and disease. Job chapter 2 and verse 7. Praise be to Jesus, the Son of God. Job 2, 7. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. And smote Job. This is how the devil is going from one home to the other. From one life to the other. Smoothing people with deadly sicknesses and diseases. People go to bed at night, they wake up and they can't pick up themselves. Satan has smoothed them with deadly diseases. Look at what is happening in our world today. Behind what is happening is the agenda of the wicked. But I tell you, the plan of Satan against the church of Jesus will not prosper. The ultimate purpose of the agenda of the wicked we are faced with today is against the church of Jesus. Because Satan can't stand the glory of God that has befall the church. But listen to me, the Bible says the church is marching on and the gates of hell shall not prevail. All we see today will end in the name of Jesus to the shame and to the disgrace of the devil and to his agent. In Jesus' mighty name. So Satan went forth from the presence of God and smote Job with boy. This is how the devil smote people. Use some of them as he is by demonic spirits in the season of the night by dream. Some is by witchcraft. Some is by satanic herbalists. Some is by, I, I do not want to say certain things on camera, but behind every kind of sickness is the works of Satan. God will not allow you to be a victim. In the mighty name of Jesus, from the sole of his foot unto the crown of his head, this man was afflicted by the wicked, the devil, with boils. I don't know who is under the sound of my voice that is afflicted by the hand of Satan. As I stretch my hand, I decree in the name of Jesus, let that affliction dry up in Jesus' name. And for those who have seasoning sicknesses that goes and come and goes and come, I decree affliction will not rise again the second time. Lay your hands on that womb. Lay your hands on your head. Lay, wh whoever you are listening to me under the sound of my voice, I decree receive your healing now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Luke chapter 13, verse 11 and verse 15. The book of Luke 13, verse 11 and verse 16. Look at what Jesus said. And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity. So the spirit of sickness is known as the spirit of infirmity. There is a spirit that is behind sickness. That spirit is called the spirit of infirmity. It doesn't matter whether it is a mental sickness, a physical sickness, a social sickness, whatever kind of sickness, there is a spirit called the spirit of infirmity. Jesus speaking here say, Behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years. Somebody is listening to me right now. You've been under an affliction for years. Before the end of this telecast, that affliction leaves you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. How wicked the devil is. Bowed together for 18 years. Well, thank God she met Jesus. She got free. But see what Jesus said at the end of it in verse 16. She got free in verse 16. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whose child are you? We are all sons and daughters of Abraham through Christ Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you are born again, you are a spiritual Jew in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day. This is how angry Jesus, your father God, gets when he sees you afflicted with sickness because you ought not to be sick, child of God. 
and he loosed her. Go read the whole passage of the Bible of, 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 of Luke 13. After Jesus made that declaration, the woman was loosed and she became straight up. That is how you are getting free today in the mighty name of Jesus completely from the works of Satan. So the devil is responsible for all kind of bondages and sicknesses. And that is why it's exciting because if it is Satan, it means that he can cheaply be cast out because Jesus has given us the authority over sickness and disease. Now that we know this, that it is God's mind for us to live and enjoy divine health. Now that we know that at the root of every sickness and disease has the finger of the devil. Whichever way that sickness comes, whether by ignorant or by demonic affliction or by you carelessly living your life, it is still the devil that is the originator of sickness and disease. How then, man of God, do I assess divine health? That is very important. How do I assess divine health? Number one, you must be saved. You must become a child of God. You must become a son and a daughter of Abraham in Christ Jesus. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. You must be saved. Divine health is possible. Divine health is available. But you must know how to assess it to enjoy it. Number one, you must be saved. You can't assess divine health if you are not saved. 1 John 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, including sickness and disease. For whatsoever is born of God. So if you are not born again, it's difficult for you to overcome the world which has in it sickness and disease. Because there is no sickness and disease outside this world. There is no sickness and disease in the realms of the spirit. Sickness and disease only exist in this world. And the Bible says that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, including the things that are in the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So number one, you must be born again. And if you are listening to me this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus in this month of May 2020, the month of divine health, I ask you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. If possibly you've been basleded, then lift up your hands and rededicate your life to Christ. It could be that you are the reason you open the door why the devil is afflicting you. And you can close that door by asking Jesus to take the seat in your heart. Surrender your life to Christ and say, Jesus, take my life and watch and see the devil pack his baggage of sickness and disease out of your life and out of your family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So number one, you must be born again. Every child of God is entitled to divine health. Praise the Lord. Number two, key, how do I assess and enjoy divine health? Service unto God. Service unto God. <laughs> Brethren, every employer is responsible for the welfare of his employees. It's important we note this. If you are a man and a woman giving to God in service, God is responsible for your well-being. You can't be serving God and be dying like the people of the world. You can't. If your service to God is genuine, God Jehovah is committed to keeping you. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. This is one of the secret of divine health. Service unto God. Please, I need you to take note of this. Divine health is a covenant. If you are not serving, God has no responsibility to keep you in sound health. He said, and ye shall serve the Lord your God. That's the condition. And ye in return shall bless your bread. That's covenant. You do your part, I do my part, and God is forever faithful. With him, there is no shadow of turning. God is committed to his word. So forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. If you do your part, his part is sealed, done, deliver. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread. You don't want to serve and you want something. You can't eat your cake and have it. 
I see many in the church are weak, they are sick, and they complain. I'm coming to church and praying. What is your relationship with God like? How committed are you to God? If you are not faithful to God, don't expect God in return to keep his word over your life because it's a covenant keeping word. He that break the edge, is a covenant keeping God. He that break the edge, the Bible said the serpent will bite. Keep your part of the covenant. He shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And this is God speaking. And I will take sickness. If God is taking sickness away from you, who can put the sickness on you? If God, I mean, there is no name of a pastor there. If God is the one taking sickness away from you, who can put the sickness on you? And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And I commend every home where my voice is being received right now. Build the altar of Christ in your family. Make Jesus the head of your family. Make Jesus the head of your life and the king on the throne of your heart. And see how the devil will cheaply get out of you. The reason things are not going the way they should go, particularly with your health, is because you have been compromising your commitment and your work with Christ. The moment you strengthen up your relationship with God, the wicked has no place in you anymore. For the light shineth in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend the light. And you know who the light is? The Lord Jesus Christ. So receive the word of God. Receive strength life. And see God perfect all that concern you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 to 48. Serving God is more than going to church. It's a commitment to God in your spirit, your soul, and your body. Serving God is more than that. Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. Because thou serveth not the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Verse 48. Therefore, thou shalt serve thy enemies. You see that even serving God, there is a way to serve the Lord. You don't serve God murmuring. You don't serve God complaining. You don't serve God like, oh God, like you are forced to because you are not coerced to. You serve God with joy. You serve God with gladness. When you don't serve God with gladness and with joy, see what the Bible says will happen to you. He said, Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in, in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Why? Because you have refused to serve God with gladness and with joy. But when you serve God with joy, with excitement, with love, you stay free from sickness and disease. Please, brethren, I want you to rededicate yourself to God and rededicate your commitment to serving God. It's a major secret to assess divine health. If you are not committed to God in service, even if you are saved, brethren, sickness will continuously visit you every now and then. Then you will be settling on just healing. You get healed today, you get sick tomorrow. But when you are committed to God in service, you will enjoy the perfect hand of God upon your health in Jesus' name. Number three, key to assess divine and sound health is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every believer should seek for grace to increase in God. Never settle for less. The more you grow in the anointing, the stronger you get in the spirit and the stronger you live your life on earth free from sickness. Praise the name of Jesus. Every child of God should aspire for the anointing. In the Old Testament, there's something they do with the anointing oil. When the cattle readers, when they are, when they are joining with their cattle, they bat them with anointing, with olive oil. Why do they do that? Against the settling of sesefly on their animals. Because when the sesefly comes and they perceive the oil on the animals, they do not perch on the animals. That is why the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Every time you are anointed and you walk under the anointing, the sesaflies of the devil cannot settle on your life. All the demonic insects that settle on others, when they come around your destiny, around your body, and they perceive the anointing, they stay away from you. 
See what the Bible says. Psalm 105 and verse 15. Psalm 105, 15 and 16. You need power to live above sickness and disease. It's very important. It's a must. It's a necessity. No power. You will continuously remain a victim of sickness and disease. Psalm 105. I'm going to read verse 15 and verse 16. It's saying, touch not my anointed. When you walk under the anointing, you become a touch not. There are people the devil cannot touch. There are people sickness and disease cannot touch. They desire to touch, but they can't. Touch not my anointed. This scripture is not just for pastors and prophets and for teachers. This scripture is for everyone who is born again. Every child of God is an anointed of the Lord. If you are saved, you are God's anointed. Touch not my anointed. That inclusive is for sickness and disease. Do not touch anyone that carries my oil and carries my grace and my anointing. So, aspire for greatness. Desire it. Long for it. And the more you walk in the anointing of God, the more you enjoy supernatural immunity from sickness and from disease. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of a bread. Verse 17. Glory be to Jesus. He sent a man before them, even Jacob, whom was sold for a servant. Let's go to 18 and 19 and then we'll stop there. Masakuli bina hangredia. Whose feet they hurt with feathers, he was laid in iron. Verse 19. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Praise the name of Jesus. Your liberty, your freedom will continue until God's words locate you. When the word of God locates you, whatever has held you bound in chain leaves you. I'm so I'm speaking the word now. I know somebody's word is coming right now. Somebody's word is coming. Until the time that his word came. After the word came, freedom came. As I'm speaking right now, the word of God is locating someone under the influence of my voice. Your liberty is coming in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So aspire for more of the grace of God. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Cultivate more time in the presence of God so that you enjoy more of God's power and God's anointing. Number four, how you assess divine health is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is important. The prayer of faith, James chapter 5, verse 14 to verse 15. James chapter 5, verse 14 to verse 15. Is any sick among you? Because none should be sick among us. But in case any is sick among you, let him call. That's why it's a question. Somebody, why would you ask a question like that? Somebody should naturally be sick among you. No, you can live a life free from sickness and disease. Divine health is available in God and is a possibility in Christ. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith. So the prayer of faith is one of the secrets of assessing divine health. You can enjoy divine health when prayer of faith is offered upon you. You might not have the ability to pray that prayer, but there are people God has set over you as elders who by the grace of God upon their lives, as they pray for you, you will be able to assess divine health. By the privilege of the grace of God upon my life, particularly over those who are under my covering and those who are under the influence of my voice, I exercise my authority as an elder in the body of Christ. I pray the prayer of faith for anyone that is sick right now and that is under the influence of my voice. Be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. Rise up from that sick bed and be made whole in Jesus' mighty name. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he had committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. So you can assess divine health by the prayer of faith. Don't be weak in faith, child of God. Be strong in faith. 
and don't be weak in seeking the face of God. Be strong in praying. For God is real and His word will not fail in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Number four, key to assess divine health is the word of God. Hallelujah. That is why even as I'm preaching now, all those who are hearing me by the Spirit of God, I can perceive in my heart that divine health is coming upon you. You can receive divine health by the word of God. Spend time to study the word of God. Locate healing scriptures. Locate scriptures that has to do with sound health. Receive the word of God and meditate on the word of God. And see how by the word, God begins to transform you to a point where you can live a sickness and disease-free life. Psalm 107 and verse 20. Psalm 107 and verse 20. Kabaji kanda li katayaba mesu krodi bahandia. Anyone that is giving to the word of God will enjoy victory over sickness and disease. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. He sent his word. And the word healed them and delivered them from all destruction, including the destruction of coronavirus and sickness and disease. So you can be completely rescued and be completely delivered from the spirit of infirmity, which is also known as the spirit of sickness and disease, by the word of God. And this is the word coming to you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Locate healing scriptures, locate health scriptures and meditate on them and take them up and believe God and confess them and declare them and see how God manifests his glory in your life and how you enjoy sound health in the name of Jesus. The devil knows this and that is why when you are sick and the word is being preached, the devil make you reject the word of God not knowing that you are rejecting your healing. But in spite of what the devil is doing in your life, I come by the word of God that you are healed and you are made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Number six key to assessing divine health is faith. Faith. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29. I wouldn't say too much on this because I started a series on Thursdays, which I will continue next Thursday on, Do You Have Faith? Faith. Matthew 9 and verse 29. See what Jesus said. Matthew 9, 29. Then touch he their eyes, say, According to your faith, be it unto you. Whatever miracle you are believing God for, whatever healing you are believing God for, if you are trusting God for sound health, divine health, your faith is a must. There are things God cannot do for you and do in you if you do not have faith. Remember, the just shall live by faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. As much as you desire God to heal you, do you believe that God can heal you? If you don't, there is nothing God can do for you. If you are hopeless as regarding the word of God, then your case is helpless. But if you can receive the faith, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, you can receive not just healing, you can begin to enjoy sound health, divine health in the mighty name of Jesus. Hebrews 4 and verse 2. So begin to get to closing. Hebrews 4 and verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. The same word that profit one does not profit the other. Brethren, God will never change. He is the same yesterday, He is the same today, He is the same forever. If God has done it for one yesterday, He can do for one today and He will do for another one tomorrow. The point is, do you have faith? The same word that was preached to us that profit us did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith to them their head. Do you have faith in the word that is being preached to you this morning? This is what God said the month of May is. Our month of divine health. It's possible to live your life free from sickness and disease by the help of God, by enjoying the abundant life of God. And finally, number seven key to assess divine health is our mouth, your confession. 
You can't be speaking sickness and expect to enjoy health. I wouldn't say much on this. I preached this three Sundays ago. The, the mouth is a weapon. You need to listen to that message over and over and over. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. In other words, health and sickness is in the power of the tongue. If you keep speaking sickness, you will keep falling sick. If you keep speaking health, you will enjoy health. In spite of whatever symptoms or feeling you have, the word of God will always overrule the works of Satan. Brethren, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Do not allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Life is in your tongue. Dead is in your tongue. Keep speaking health. I am well. I am strong. I am made whole by the blood and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No wonder the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. They whom the Lord has redeemed from destruction. Open your mouth and confess the word of God in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. I know sometimes, like I said before, the more you confess, the more it looks like the symptom is multiplying. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear, but be moved by the word of God. I present to you that seven keys to assess divine health. And in the course of this month, I will be preaching on different areas of God's power to heal and how to assess and enjoy God's healing power. And I'm trusting God. By the time May is done, there will be nothing like sickness around you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are sick right now, lay your hands where that sickness is. If it's a sickness in your blood, lay your hands on your head. And brethren, believe God by faith. And if you receive your healing after this prayer, please send your testimonies. Father, the Bible says, I shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. I decree by the power of God because distance is no barrier with God. As my hand has stretched, anyone sick, in their body, their mind, their soul, their spirit, I decree now be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause you spirit of infirmity, live in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone suffering from any symptoms of coronavirus or coronavirus himself, I decree by the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, be healed in the name of Jesus. I cause cancer, I cause HIV, I cause any kind of sickness in the cell, the bones, the veins. I cause live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, manifest your grace and your power in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus, please do so. Ask Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior and watch the grace of God begin to manifest in you from this day and for the rest of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you have communion items with you, lift it up before the Lord. I turn the bread to the body of Christ, the juice to the, the blood of Jesus. As you eat and drink, receive life in Jesus' mighty name. It is well with you. It is well with your children. It is well with members of your household. You will go from strength to strength in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name.